Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Irrational, the podcast where we discuss uh, various pieces of media and the fears that they've instilled in us. Um, you might notice that we are once again and still in the cabin. Um, I called my landlord to ask him about the boarded up doors and windows and uh, also to complain a little bit about the guy downstairs. And um, and his wife said that he's been dead for, for 20 years, which is <laughs> like... I mean, if he's dead, who's cashing my rent checks, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll, I'll get it sorted out. Um, I've dealt with worse landlords. Um, not a big deal. Anywho, uh, so this week's episode is um, my very best friend in the world, John Campbell. Uh, I love John. You're going to love him as well. Uh, we had a really fun conversation. Can't believe that we stayed on track as much as we did, which isn't all that much. Uh, but it was a fun time. Um, I, we forget to plug anything at the end of the episode because we were just having such a good conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, you can find John on Twitter at Johnny Cams. That's J-O-N-N-Y-C-A-M-S. And he also has a website with the same name. Uh, so JohnnyCams.com. Um, that is currently under construction. Uh, he should have it up and running soon. Uh, feel free to check it out. Um, he is an illustrator. Um, he does really fun cartoons and I'm trying to encourage him to do more of those and get them up on that website. So let's hope, hope that uh, is up and running soon. And as I mentioned last week, uh, because I always forget to plug myself, um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and whatever uh, at Charlie Rohr, C-H-A-R-L-I-E-R-O-H-R-E-R. -E -E you can also find my Tumblr with my show dates and whatnot, uh, hearmeroar.tumblr.com. Uh, that's also R-O-H-R-E-R in Hear Me Roar. Um, so yeah, uh, without further ado, John Campbell. Uh, so John, how are you? I am great. That's good. <laughs> how are you? I am great as well. I'm always That's good great. when you're here. Oh yeah. You For those are. that don't know, John, uh, this is John Campbell. He is my best friend in the whole entire world. And the same for Charlie. Hello, listeners. Yep. Charlie's also Charlie's best friend in the whole entire world. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Yeah, we are. Um, John and I met in high school. That's uh, right. And we grew up. Uh, we became fast friends because we shared the common ground of not having cable. That's right. As kids. So we were exposed to... As everyone was talking about Hey Arnold mm -hmm. and Cat Dog and things like that, we're like, hey, Arthur's pretty great, right? Yeah. And I was the only person who was like, yeah, Arthur's fucking rocks, man. <laughs> or Simpsons at 5 and 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then again at 10, 10.30. That's right. Memories. And then that's uh, we had very limited access to media. So I don't know. We I felt like we... I Personally, I feel like I was really far behind. Like I feel like you name a movie that... I'm supposed to have seen, I haven't seen it. Like, I think I said that in the last episode even. Like, so like I was always behind with scary movies and shit. I didn't see any scary movies until I was really late in my life. And then you. I, I did, I was, I grew up very quiet, very sheltered, very like, very shy, I guess is the right word. And when, uh, the, the reason that we're going to get into the episode today is when I first decided I'm going to watch a grown up show, I'm going to watch an episode of the X-Files. Uh, so when I first decided to do that, it scarred me for life and I didn't watch any adult shows, any grown up shows for several years because of it. Right. And that's, I can see that happening because that is definitely a grown up show. And that's actually, uh, why I forgot to bring it up, but uh, why I brought up us both not having cable and we have limited access to media and stuff because I didn't, we didn't grow up with, uh, are you afraid of the dark? Right. And like Tales from the Crypt. Or was that even, was that Cable? I think that was Tales Cable. From the Crypt was yeah. Cable. So like we didn't have the in-between version. We just went from from from, goose, from Goosebumps and Arthur to <laughs> yeah, the Sagua scariest shit ever. Yes. To <laughs> X-Files. So like that's hugely frightening. Like, you don't have any sort of buffer zone. You're just suddenly you're already you're on, you're on you're on you're something that your dad would watch and still be a little creeped out and you're 10 years old watching and you're definitely not ready for it right exactly so the episode that you happened upon uh, uh, what's it? it's called dead dead alive. dead alive it is season eight episode 15 uh and in right case when the x-files gets really good really really <laughs> good right after david Duchovny is no we tried to the, watch it last night and we couldn't i just fast forwarded to the timestamp. No. 
watched the gross thing, agreed with you hold har- wholeheartedly, <laughs> and then we watched five more minutes and turned it off. It was such a boring, bad episode. It's a very bad episode. If For people at home that want to understand what we're looking at, uh, you do not have to watch the whole show to understand what's going on. It's super disgusting. Pull up Netflix, season eight, episode 15, and go right to the 22-minute mark, 2200. Yeah. Uh, it's going to have a guy... In a hospital bed who I think comes back to life, if I remember right in the storyline, he comes back to life and is found floating, dead, bloated, and is reincarnated. And what will happen is he's going to take a shower and he's going to shed his skin. Yeah. So when I first watched this show, I had well done. I, it was <laughs> disgusting. Uh, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I thought, uh, and the, before I even can jump into that um, for X Files, I am going to defend that the later seasons are okay. They're not great, yeah. but then we have to remember that X Files wasn't that great anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of the episode where uh, Mulder decides to go inside a video game, and it's oh my god, that it was so good. We just we just watched it is that one. the worst thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, but anyway. Anyway, so this is, I, I still will fight for the later seasons. There's a lot of garbage, but there's a lot of solid episodes in there. But this one in yeah. particular is garbage. Um, I will say before we get into what scared the shit out of me was uh, a big thing in our family was we came from, there was four kids and it was, I had an older brother, a younger brother and a younger sister. Back to Goosebumps. One thing that uh, I definitely have a vivid memory of was when the V-chip came out that there was ratings on the television for different television shows and for goosebumps when it came on in the afternoon uh that what we would do is we would kick our sister out of the room because it was tv y7 old enough for seven-year-olds and she was like five or six at the time so we said all right katie it's time to leave we're gonna watch the show because we're grown-ups so we would watch goosebumps and kick her out so that was a big part of me adhering to a tv 14 show when i was 10 11 years old being like "Ooh, i can handle this i know what's going on kind of thing very full of shit so what you're saying is you're a huge square you're i'm <laughs> a giant square and i follow the rules because rules. the rules are there the rules are meant to be followed <laughs> isn't it a dalai lama quote uh, know the rules so that you can break them efficiently mm-hmm. so anyway that's a later part of life story so um yeah, around what? 27 years old. That's when you started breaking rules. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I finally did it yesterday. Um, I so the episode, uh, as you've just seen it, is disgusting. What's going to happen is the guy's a floated, dead, gross corpse, and then he's going to jump in the shower and shed his skin. Yeah. Well, so the the corpse itself, when they show him lying in the hospital bed, I was like, oh, this is gross. But I was like, I guess, I guess as a kid, you know, this would freak you out, and then when he got up i was like oh he's moving around now that's not good and then it cuts to like the shower drain and the first shot is blood and you just know exactly what's happening and i was like what the fu-? like i freaked out i was like no 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 and then they showed it <laughs> and i was like they only show it for honestly probably like three or four seconds it's right, very yeah. short it's like it a feels like an eternity yeah it's so so short so I so yeah the episode will have him in the shower and I looked up a little bit of research for the show uh, the show for the makeups uh, it was disgusting but the big part of the blood and guts was strawberry jam Ugh. was a big thing that they threw down so uh, another fun thing that I found for this episode was it aired in 2001 and it hit 12 million viewers and 11% of all TVs on at the time were watching this show. And I was one of those 11%. Uh, And just a fun little side note too, it won an Emmy for Outstanding Makeup, which is pretty great, uh, but also terrifying. So me, I got really excited. I finally decided I'm going to watch a grown-up show. I thought thought that story was going to end with, and after this scene... Only one percent of television. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> the sharpest like, decline. No, thank you. Sorry. So you, um, so you watch the show. I watch the show, and I decided I'm really going to do it. And I was traumatized. The and show. You said eighth grade. I just about yeah. I would say it's probably going to be eighth grade for me. Seventh, eighth grade. What um, is that? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Around for thirteen. I don't know. I've so. never known. I have no concept of time. Um, my favorite thing, if I can find it, was the one of the uh, uh, like producers of the show found the sequence to be, quote, awfully graphic and was incredibly surprised when it got back censors because it would definitely not be shown in a movie that was rated PG uh, or PG-13. So yeah. it just, uh, red goo was made out of jam and placed all over his skin. It was, yeah, it was horrifying. That's what I was thinking watching it. I was like, this isn't, 
new. Like this is too like that could get a, you could get past you could get by with that like tenfold on like uh, FX or something like that. Right. But I was like, this is channel thirty two in the nineties probably. Uh yeah, two thousand, two thousand one. Oh two thousand one. Like that's too early for that. It's it was uh like now you can watch I don't know Game of Thrones and you can see yeah. a giant twenty minute long battle scene that is horribly graphic but this is like like yeah that but even the two networks that we're mentioning for current standards are right. still special networks that can get away with more stuff exactly yeah like I'm sure I guess Fox could probably get away with that now but just the fact that they did that in two thousand one that's insane it was disgusting. Um, yeah, it completely put me off all media. I was horrified at the idea of a horror movie because mm-hmm. I thought grown-ups could all stomach this horrible content and this was in every single one. Yeah. This makes this paints a picture of like any scary movie, any adult content will have a scene where is equally as horrifying as this. Like, you don't you don't have a uh, showers off his body. You don't have a little warning label at the beginning. Any single movie that I watched, I was terrified that suddenly something horribly graphic and disgusting was around the corner. Uh, I didn't watch horror movies until college. Yeah. Now I love them. Uh, there are so many great ones out there. Um, but that the for an example of just how scared and like another kind of down memory lane story was whenever this aired seventh eighth grade. I was invited to a slumber party at a friend's house across the, or like around the corner from me. And we're all prepubescent boys. We're excited to watch a horror movie. Blair Witch Project had just come out. I had just seen this episode of X-Files and fresh in my brain is the idea that, ooh, this is a scary movie. There's probably going to be some real gross shit and yeah. I'm going to be the weirdest, like everyone's going to make fun of me. Everyone's like, no, it's going to be fine. I watched it last week. It was totally okay. And I did not believe them. <laughs> and I stayed in another room with another kid who did not want to watch the scary movie. So we were the two nerds sitting in the next room while everyone else was having a great time and staying up late and laughing and shouting and everything else like that. That's so brutal. It That's... was I was I was mortified at the simple idea of being scared. And what's that? That's like and that movie an hour, sucks. That movie minutes. is so bad. Blair Witch, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing, like, there's terrifying parts, but there's nothing on the level of a man shedding his entire strawberry jam skin. Right. And then, but just, was it worth it to sit in the other room? and? It was not worth it be because we had nothing to talk about and we, I think we went to bed early. I yeah. think we probably knocked That's out what at I'm thinking. Like, 10 o'clock. Go home. Like, yeah, I could, exactly. I sit I looked, in the other room. And I was around the corner. I would have been a much better <laughs> scenario to go home and just sleep in my bed. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, so I was always a, a big chicken shit with uh, scary movies and stuff too. Like I um, would always leave the room. I one time had a similar experience, but I didn't have any options to go home. I was at, a cousin's house like we were away on vacation and all of my cousins were staying at like or multiple families were staying in like one of our cousins big um homes i don't know uh and they all put on a scary movie i can't remember what it was mm-hmm. and i went outside and sat on the um the trampoline i didn't even jump i just sat there and just <laughs> waited for the movie to be over so i could go back in and hang out with my cousins but i didn't have the option to like go home or anything like that I don't know. But I yeah. did have the option to go in any other room in the house. <laughs> I just put myself outside alone and just, I just sat imagine on imagine it's just like a very slow rain and then you eventually came back to the window pane, <laughs> hand on the window pane. Oh, is it oh. done yet? <laughs> and they're like, no, we're putting out the sequel. God. But yeah. I don't know. But I was just like coward too. And like I, I've had experiences where uh, I woke kids up at sleepovers because I was scared <laughs> in the middle of the night because we had just watched. Oh, my God. I watched Scary Movie. A parody of scary <laughs> movies. What, how old was I when that came out? That's got to be high school. At least, yeah. I don't know. I, w- I watched that and I, for some reason that night I was too scared to sleep and I like woke up a friend on accident, quote unquote. <laughs> like I, I just made noise and I bumped him and then he woke up and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then like just the check-in of like, okay, I'm speaking to a human. I can go to sleep now. And that kind of helped. And I fell asleep within the hour of that. This, yeah for that even before this episode came out that i was always neurotic and scared of everything uh that i definitely have very real memories of new year's eve my entire family turning into 2000 that y2k virus was 100 percent real 
I was the only one who knew in my family that the world was going to end and really? robots were going to whatever. And I have very vivid memories of being in the basement watching whatever the countdown show was and telling them like, you guys are all going to see I'm the one who's right. And I wasn't. And they, <laughs> they, they forgot about it. I'm sure one of them will be listening to this at least. And will definitely like to remember that story, but that uh, they did not let me forget that like, John, you gotta, you gotta relax, man. You were that's you were way too young for that. To no. be that stressed about that? To be that stressed I would have been like twelve at the time. What did you think was gonna happen? I, the computers did you think they were gonna revolt or just shut down? I, one of the two. Because in my head as a kid, I didn't believe it was gonna happen, but the a tiny little bit of me that believed it was picturing revolt. I thought computers yeah, ter- were gonna kill us all. Like the first ten minutes of Terminator or whatever. Yeah. But realistically what it would have what they were predicting was they all just gonna shut down. Yeah. And then Which is we were just going to be also so scary. The stock exchange scarier and probably because at least with computers revolting, we all die quickly. <laughs> like if if uh, all of like the grid shuts down, and we, we die, we die pretty pretty efficiently. I think if the robots did win, that they would get rid of humans pretty efficiently. Yeah, exactly. They're going to trim that fat. But if we're killing each other, that's going to be sloppy and scary. Sloppy and scary. If robots, <laughs> if singularity does come and robots are really like really good engineers. Mm-hmm. Humans are going out. It's not going to be like the Matrix. I thought the singular- singularity is the merging of the two. I think it's like, isn't it intelligence and then like just, or just artificial intelligence. It's not that they're going to be the uprising. It's that artificial intelligence will be smarter than humans. No, I think singularity is when we can, we reach a point where we can upload our consciousness into computers. Well, we don't know. Write in and let <laughs> us know. <laughs> <laughs> Robots. Uh, good or bad? Caller, uh, you're on the line. <laughs> Um, we don't have any. Call we don't have any. This is not live. Very sorry. Some of these are recorded weeks in advance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so where were we? Uh, so when, when did this like, you got over this eventually? I did. Yeah. Yes. I also grew up very religious, and I think that was a big part of it for me. Just kind of being, for for Pete Holmes, the comedian, his line of uh, a lifeguard god. I was very worried of every like always something looking over my shoulder and like telling me not to do something or to do something yeah so you think your religious upbringing might have had something to do with you taking oh, this so seriously definitely i i i because for me i i would always like i would never be the class clown i'd be the good the good boy like the the teacher's pet yeah who would also crack jokes sometimes okay and that i loved and only ro- the teacher would laugh only the teacher <laughs> would laugh oh that's a good one johnny and then give me like a gold sticker it was great uh, it's as good as it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I definitely remember like the subversion of being like in like someone would look after me and then I would also like the idea of like just kind of like pushing that limit just a little bit and that I was terrified of that limit mm-hmm. for such a long time until I realized none of it means anything. Like yeah. there's there's uh that for me I think a book that really did change my life for that idea is uh the Watchmen, the uh, the comic book graphic novel that the the comedian in there, uh, in case you haven't read it or seen the movie, you don't have to see the movie. It's not that great. Uh, but I, I like, you know, I do, like it. I do. I do own the super duper box cut like or director's like seven hour long version or whatever it is, yeah. too. And it is and there's some good stuff, but there's also there's a it's very long. Right. I would never argue. With oh, it. God. I just I just like it. Personally. I do like it, though. All right. I will. I will rescind that last statement. I do like the Watchmen. But still don't need to see it. though. Still just don't need to see it. It's all right. Uh, the comic book is very large, but uh, there's a character in it, the comedian. And one of the, I can't remember the exact line of dialogue, uh, and the character definitely has character flaws, as people who have read the book will tell you, he definitely does some really, really bad stuff. Right. But uh, there's a part where he's kind of bending the rules, breaking up a riot. Another character says, what are you doing? Like, that's illegal. We're supposed to be protecting people, essentially. And he says, don't you get it? This is all a joke. This is like, none of this matters. Just do whatever the hell you're going to do anyway. Right. And that I definitely remember that realization of just like, as long as you tiptoe along the line, you'll be okay. You'll, you'll be able to, as long as you like, you don't do something egregious and get in trouble, jail time, whatever it is, versus like even just like getting in trouble from mom and dad that I've always really enjoyed just like the simple pleasure of knowing that what I'm doing might be bad but you're doing it inside the lines or kind of almost like secretly just like it's so that you picked the worst 
nihilist in media to yeah. follow. <laughs> exactly. That's my life You were now. inspired. Like, any, you just were like, no, that's the one. That's the guy the that's one. killing people. The like, guy who's <laughs> killing people. But none of it matters. Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely realized that... Uh, that you can you can do things without having the fear of a lifeguard god staring over you and telling you what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. That I realize that as long as you have a moral compass and you do things for the right reasons, it's okay to bend the rules. And this is when you stopped being afraid of scary movies? I would say that definitely led into it because I, I didn't read Watchmen until I was in college. And that's yeah. probably when I started watching horror movies again. So you, right now, like you watch a horror movie, you're not going to really lose sleep or anything? Oh, nef- definitely not. No. Okay, I see. For sure. Unless, Me, unless it's like... can still lose sleep. I, still I've lost sleep over reading about the babadook never even seen the movie and <laughs> i've know, lost pretty, sleep imagining i would say uh no be. no spoilers and again just to leave it vague for people but like the movie when i left that movie i was like what the fuck was that i okay okay but i think the conversation i if you do see the babadook it is on netflix right now uh i would recommend see it with people um and then have a conversation afterwards because yeah. when we when we saw it everyone it was me and three other people we left and we're like that was what the f- that what, like no just uh, just being kind of more upset of the I don't know the just we heard such great things going in and sure. then talking about it afterwards like well this probably meant that and that and just like kind of slowly ha- make it a, a good movie in retrospect. exactly and then and then realizing I've oh actually heard sure. that before about the Babadook yeah that I I don't think I I think it is a good a good movie in the sense that. It leaves you wanting to talk about it. It leaves you sure. wanting to. And I love that. That's what I, I like. I want that over anything in a movie. Like, sure, I love a movie that I'm enjoying it during it. But like the movies where I then get in like a really deep conversation and really want to talk to people about it, that's the movie that I want to see again. Totally. You know? And that's the same for like. That's kind of the bummer of everyone watching Netflix. Like, th- like, like I said, this movie, this sh- this show came out 11 percent of all TVs that were on in the nation. We're watching this show where now if you're watching, I think the, maybe the exception would be Game of Thrones or maybe Breaking Bad, something that are like like big things that have kind of a cult following behind them that if you're binging whatever on Netflix, you'll be like, oh. Yeah, X-Files didn't, X-Files had like a huge fan base, yeah. but I wouldn't compare it to like Game of Thrones. Or I would say, I, guess, you know, maybe. I would say, well, I guess it's more for the time period. It's relatively. It's that like, but it's like, it's week to season week. eight. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy numbers. Exactly. That if a show today had that, it would be a bona fide like gold star. Like, th- just it's going to be printing money. Yeah. You know. And it's like season eight. David Duchovny's gone. Yeah. This it's is the ep- this is the episode where he comes back. Oh for, really? For, like he'll come back for like five episodes or something. I forget the exact story. Or, yeah. I will say too because I just rewatched the original X Files because of Kamel Ninjani's podcast, uh, yeah, the X Files Files, uh, but. <laughs> That as we were getting into this season, uh, it was definitely starting to wane interest. My fiance and I were watching it, and then I was like, "Oh, I think this is the episode. Oh, this is the episode where the guy was going to start shedding his skin." You were slowly realizing. It I like, was slowly, and then oh, I actually, I I undercut myself because like the memory came back when we were watching the show. I'm like, "Oh right, didn't this happen?" And there was like three episodes before it where something close and gross happens, and I'm like, "Oh, oh no, that's not it. It wasn't yeah. gross enough." And then when it finally happened, I was like. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> That's so funny. But like, I think for the idea for like kind of like the Netflix, um, like th- just for the point is like, and other people have said it better than I. But like, let's say I'm watching Breaking Bad and you finish the show or The Wire, whatever the show is now. That there's nothing that's hit the zeitgeist where if you're at a party, you can be like, "Hey, have you watched Breaking Bad? Oh, I'm only on season two. Okay, there's nothing else we have to say about it. Yeah, that it's not. I feel like like this show, even when it was kind of on the uh, the outward spiral out that I would say like Game of Thrones or other shows that you're like, oh, did you watch it last week? Yeah, it was great. There's You don't really get that uh, water cooler talk yeah, water as much cooler. for TV shows. Yeah. It, yeah, you don't. And especially because like now everything is uh, accessible um, on our own time because mm-hmm. we all have uh, like streaming services, HBO Go, you know, Netflix, all that shit. So it's like people aren't in a hurry to watch it when it's first because back then you watched it or you recorded it with a vcr or and like stealing stories from from the x-files files for that that they would have people that would pass around tapes there'd be a guy who would record it and then you'd go on some to know someone that exactly or you'd go on some weird message board and you'd be like hey uh does anyone have season four episode three i can't find it anywhere and Mm -hmm. then you'd have to wait months maybe you might get it 
Right. So that people would like set their watch and be like, nope, I have plans Monday night. I have the X-Files. Like, exactly. Yeah. It's, so oh. that is, you can just... Honey, that's why there's no water cooler talk. Cause honey, it's our anniversary. Sorry, X Files, seven o'clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's our anniversary, every hour except <laughs> seven to eight. I know you really wanted something special, but I'm sorry. Seven, six central. I got it's you. me time. A new episode of the X Files. David Duchovny might come back in this one. That's what I hear. I hope <laughs> it's supposed to be a gross strawberry jam shower. <laughs> That's the pull quote. That's the name of this episode. A gross strawberry jam shower. That works for me. Um, <laughs> John Campbell and a gross strawberry jam shower. <laughs> that might be it. We'll see. Um, so I was always afraid to um, watch scary movies and stuff as a kid. I yeah. would see a trailer for a scary movie and I would lose sleep over it for a year. Uh, <laughs> like Chucky. Like real scared of Chucky my whole life. Uh the scream guy like i don't know any anything yeah. you name it i was having nightmares about it yeah all the time uh then as i got older i watched these movies and i'm like that's not that bad that's yeah. not scary like i was afraid of chuck like he's just a doll but here's the thing in the trailer you just see like the quick little bits and it's like, you know, it's a trailer. It's edited to show you how scary it is. And then like as a kid, I had such a great imagination that I would just go above and beyond imagining all this scary shit. And I realized like my imagination as a child was just better than these movies. <laughs> so when I finally saw them, I was like, oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I could have been, like, if I had seen the movie, I would have lost less sleep because I would have gotten the, the shitty movie out of the way. The same with... Um just like leaving so many blanks in the story. It's uh, in comic books, it's the in between the panels. Like if you have A to B to C in the story, you have to figure out and combine the stories. If you only get part B of the movie, then you have to fill in A and C and it's always so much worse than whatever they could do. Right. Uh, the same for me that I had, I'm, I'm no longer, but uh, I used to have terrified of clowns because Stephen King's It, mm -hmm. the the TV miniseries, I watched it once on, on, on WGN's Saturday movie, whatever. And I watched that movie again recently and that movie is fucking terrible. It does not hold up. It is, it is like the most boring two hours of something and then something kind of scary happens at the yeah. end. But growing up, everyone was like, Stephen King's it. Oh my God. Have you seen it? It is so scary. Blah, blah, and, blah. and then now everyone's like, it sucks. It's Why are we? And I'm like, what? It does not hold up. Uh, that for me, the exact same, probably the exact same time that this came out, another weird little like, Oh, I'm going to do this. So I was on TV, didn't really like clowns, decided to watch it and it's the finale which spoiler alert but it's not because the movie's really old and it's not anything anyways he turns into like a spider thing and then some shit goes down but it's just like a creepy cave kids follow him in there he turns into a spider thing and with like giant legs and attacks them and i also have a horrible fear of spiders still to this day oh yeah so you think that's <laughs> definitely it's funny that the spiders stuck but the clowns didn't the clowns spiders, i mean spiders are creepy on their own Oh, I've got some people argue that clowns I are creepy on there. Star for for spiders. There's one time my mom will still remember this story. I was taking a air conditioning unit out of a window, and however heavy an AC unit is, we'll say it's 50 pounds. That feels average. I don't know really, but that's it's it's a lot of weight. And I'm lifting it out of the window, and I take a big heave ho out of it. And in the corner, in the crevice next to the back of the unit, in between like the window and the unit, there was a giant spider nest. And there was a spider there oh, wow. and it was probably just a daddy long legs or something. And this must've been high school, probably college even. And I'm like, bring it out giant thing in my hands. And I see a spider there and it's like, a, like inches from my hand. And I start going, goo, 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 goo. <laughs> and I'm like freaking out, spinning left and right. Like, oh, where do I, where do I draw? She's like, just calm down. It's like, it's a spider. No, like definitely still like I, I can, I can do anything really right now, but if this is just a giant creepy crawly spider, I'm not going to be a fan of that at all. Yeah, I'm not like super afraid of spiders, but they're still spiders, man. Like I don't want them on me. I don't want them near me. Like no. camping once I like we were passing wood and then this kid like that sounded like a weird phrase. We we're passing this wood from like closer to the forest, closer to the fire. Mm -hmm. And it got to me through three people and i'm the first person to notice there's a wolf spider sitting on top of it Ugh. and i was like ah and threw it into the fire 
but like everyone's made fun of me and i was like it's a wolf spider that could ruin my weekend like if i get bit by that like because like they think they swell you up it's not poisonous like i'm not gonna fucking yeah. die but like you like swell up from a wolf spider bite and it's like super painful i was like i don't want pain I don't, I like, used, what do you mean it's i used to okay have to be afraid of that irrational fears of brown recluse and, bra- and black widows just being anywhere because they like like damp uh, dark little like nooks and crannies like right. if you had like your a, mouth like a, yeah exactly <laughs> that's right like if you had a hamper that like let's say you worked out and you had a hamper full of old dirty clothes right there's stories of black widows showing up in there if like I don't know, you don't do your laundry for x number of months or whatever it is so it's not uh, but that's again we live in the suburbs of chicago you got to be out in the woods somewhere for that to actually happen but in my yeah. mind that could happen at any time there's i don't know are brown recluse I know wolf spiders can be near near where we are. It's more like southern Illinois, if anything. It's like yeah. it's at least a hundred miles away. Yeah. I would say, fifty miles maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, that mouth thing, the eating spiders thing, that's an urban legend. Yeah. That's oh yeah, yeah. Total it bullshit. That. Uh, what is the story on it? It's like the. Uh, it's the fact, quote unquote, that you can right. that you eat eight spiders a year. Like the average human eats, yeah, eats as spiders. Yeah, as eat. you're asleep, they crawl into your mouth and you swallow them. Right. right. Yeah. But that's bullshit because spiders know that that's a living being and they're like, I don't want to be anywhere how, near that. How? How? No. Yeah. I mean, if that was true, you'd wake up with spiders in your mouth all the time. Like you can't. Yeah. I I've would never just woken be, up with a spider. I'd just be waking mouth. up with <laughs> spider again. You'd at least hear someone that you know, like I woke up with a spider in my mouth. What the you fuck would hear that? the story at least once. Yeah. But no, uh, it's an urban legend. It was one of those things where like people... I think it was like a test of like how quick can information spread on the internet back when like the internet was brand new. Right. And they sent it out in an email and it like the next day <laughs> the nation was like, you eat spiders all the time. Did then you your mom that? forwarded it to your aunt and she forwarded it to, to her friend and they told two friends and they told two friends. And 15 years later, we still think we all believe it. We all eat spiders in our sleep. It's only just now coming to light that that is not true. The only way we're eating on average eight spiders a year is through eating processed foods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of dead bugs. We're definitely eating tons of ant- like bugs and shit, but they're processed and cooked and we're fine. You can look it up. Lots I can't remember what it is, but uh, for for artificial dyes, I think it's like red 14, red 40, something like that. If you eat candy that uh, I forget which one it is, but there is at least a handful of different dyes that are made out of crushed beetles. Sure. That's the primary ingredient. Yeah. Well, like um, gummy bears and shit are made out of like powdered hooves and yeah, bones cow hooves yeah oh god disgusting. that's why they're not vegan like people will be like how isn't this vegan it's pure sugar it's like well there's yeah if you eat jello still a big dead animal parts yeah. in it. uh i can't also just for kind of uh coming back to it because clowns were a big like scary thing for me too mm-hmm. that i did find and again this is with a grain of salt because i read it on the internet five years ago but that uh they would believe that um clowns would be kind of a racist stereotype of an irish person in like sure. the 1910s yeah. uh that like if you think about it that the stereotypes would be giant red hair red nose white face uh big oversized clothes with patches all over them hilarious and <laughs> that if you think about a stereotypical 1910 irish immigrant he would have red hair maybe he was balding because he was older he had a red nose because he was drunk yeah he had white face because he was very pale uh red cheeks maybe because he was drunk as well uh and then the stereotype would be irish catholic maybe there's 10 kids in the family uh that if that was true that maybe michael was born first and patrick was born seventh Patrick was a smaller boy at Michael's age, so when he gets Michael's hand-me-downs, there's patches on there, they're three sizes too large, the right. shoes don't fit, and that it's more or less, uh, and again, I don't I don't know if it's true, but I definitely do believe that it is still an outdated stereotype. Strong that, argument. And it's the same for the things that you don't realize are still there, like uh, for the same idea, paddy wagon is a phrase that is horribly racist that we right. use every single day. Yeah. Because the idea would be uh, a patty is a slur for an Irish person and that what would happen is the bars are closing out. They would take a station wagon. They would go down and they'd say, let's go round up the drunks, put them in the drunk tank, and they would end up calling it a paddy wagon. Right. Where did we get? Let's go back to actual. Well, this isn't the Cracked podcast. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, exactly. Welcome to Cracked. um, What were we talking about? Um, Seven wonderful racist things. Oh, so... uh, so like I said, I was always afraid as a kid, always like death, deathly afraid of everything. Um, and then we started hanging out with Andrew more. Right. And Andrew loves scary movies. And because of him, we went to like the music box, box massacre, the 24 hour horror movie mass or 
sorry, 24 hour horror movie marathon in Chicago. And, uh, that's like the most scary movies I'd ever seen in the span of several years. Even, you could say yeah. a month and I still wouldn't normally watch that many scary movies in that month. So like just hanging out with Andrew, we started watching way more scary movies and then I got really into it. And then yeah. I, was, I started watching like all the scary movies that I'd never seen as a kid, like the exorcist and shit. And then, which well, seeing if, the exorcist, you, if you've lost like, if you've lost your religion the exorcist is not scary at all that's like when i so i saw it and i was like that was fine it was entertaining <laughs> it was entertaining but it wasn't like um it wasn't that scary like i was i didn't really get it and then once afterwards like i talked to people about it and they're like well you're not religious you don't exactly why would you be afraid of that and i was like oh for sure like i'm not afraid of being uh, possessed by anything exactly so yeah. why would i be afraid of this movie but even so like so that was a that one's like a drastic difference but even so like there are a bunch of other movies that we've seen just through hanging out with andrew that i'm like why was i afraid of this shit like exactly growing the, up and this the the same point but a little bit different is that uh for being scared by the like the i think the whole episode is about being scared about the concept of a scary movie exactly is it's that uh, like and we'll do more quotes. Alfred Hitchcock. There's nothing scarier than a than a closed door, or a locked door, right. because like you can have the slow zoom in on the door. What's on the other side? What's if you fill in the blanks? It's so much worse than whatever is on the other side. Yeah, but that like uh, I guarantee when I see the Babadook, right. I'm gonna be way less afraid of the Babadook totally than I am right now. Yeah, you're you're terrified of what is, but once you see it, you're on the other side. You're like, eh, right. yeah, that's how it, it's always it always is with me. Whenever I watch a scary movie. It's like the lead up, it just terrifies me. And then afterwards I'm like, oh, like I, it's kind of like, it's kind of like an earworm, like mm -hmm. the idea of an earworm song where you keep repeating the song in your head because you keep saying that same part. You keep saying that same part. There's something about the human brain that likes to complete things. Mm -hmm. So like what you're doing is like when you're repeating things over and over, you're trying to like fill in those blanks, but you can't because you know that you're wrong because you're just guessing the lyrics same thing with scary movies is I'll obsess and I'll think and I'll like worry because my brain is trying to complete what is this scary movie? Like, what is it about? And then when I see it, it completes it. So by the same way of having a song stuck in your head, listening to that song gets the song out of your head. I should just fucking see the movie. Just, yeah, get it over I with. I should just see the scary movie and then I'll stop thinking about it instead of like right now I, I'm not losing sleep over the Babadook, but like when I saw like the trailers and read about it and stuff, I would think about it every... I wouldn't, like, lose sleep like I did as a kid. As a right. kid, I'd stay up till 3 a.m. Every part of my body under covers. I, <laughs> to this day, I'm like, do I have brain damage? Because, like, I <laughs> honestly was depleting myself of oxygen for so long as a kid because yeah. I was so scared. I had... They can't, that's not healthy for you. <laughs> no, it's not. So, like... But nowadays, it's more just, like, there'll be, like, an hour before I fall asleep where I'm just, like, it'll pop into my head, you know. But I'm an adult now. The it's same, close to an adult as I'm ever going to It's, gonna uh... For the same concept for like kind of problem solving, uh, I'll tell the condensed version of the story. But Malcolm Gladwell, the author of Tipping Point Blank, no, I'm, I'm, I just love the idea of you telling a condensed version of a story. I'm gonna yeah, <laughs> that's never gonna happen. Get ready, guys. Part two coming next week. Uh, the the I believe this story is from the tipping point. And it's just the idea of how a little thing eventually reaches a point where everyone knows about it. Um, the story goes for uh, Blue's Clues. It might be blank. I can't remember what. But anyway, the story is about uh, Blue's Clues and versus Sesame Street for the way that they did um, their production schedule and the way that it aired. That normally for Sesame Street, and now it's on HBO, which is a whole other thing. Did you know that? Yeah. It's behind a paywall. Anyway, that's not important. It's fine. So Kids uh, don't need yeah. to be up to like the most recent season on <laughs> Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to be like, no spoilers. Hey, no I'm spoilers. A, I'm at a I don't party. know what the letter of the oh, day is. <laughs> I'm on episode 40 of season 700. Uh, <laughs> So um, anyway, the story is Blue's Clues, when they produced it, they normally, for Sesame Street, would have five days of a new show. And yes, there's obviously other repeats and they would do lots of things too, but there was kind of a storyline that would happen and it would usually be five different days worth of content. The guys that made Blue's Clues realized that kids and all humans like to solve problems in a predictable manner and like to be able to see what's going to happen next so what they would do instead was instead of doing five different episodes or four different episodes in a week they would do the same episode five days in a row kids sees it on monday and the creator of the show is going to say where's the clue way to beat where is it 
it's back there. First time the kid's going to watch it, he's not, he's going to try to figure it out and he's going to get it. Yeah. By the time he's watched it, maybe depending on whoever's watching him, maybe the How fifth time the it's, he's going to be <laughs> able to say the clues behind the couch, whatever it is to complete the thought, but that they went in with the idea that the reason why we want to watch something over and over again is because we like being able to tell ourselves, I'm smart. I know where the clue is. Right. That's like um, a thing I read about how spoilers can help um, improve your enjoyment of a movie. Yeah. Whereas everyone's like, no spoilers, no spoilers. It's like if you know it ahead of time, you you guess it. So you get that satisfaction of, or you don't actually guess it. You just know it. But your brain gets the same satisfaction as guessing something. Totally. Still fucking hate spoilers. Same, though. yeah, for, for Game of Thrones that like, it's always that like, if you if you're just on Reddit or Facebook the next Monday morning, that oh, yeah. maybe just one thing you're like ah fuck, and then you'll go. Oh, I'm kind of glad that I knew that uh, this was going to happen because then you can watch the episode and you get this weird grandiose satisfaction of I'm going to fill in the blank. I know where the clue is. Yeah, exactly. Humans are weird. Yeah, we're all dumb. We're all dumb dumbs. <laughs> well, John, thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks. Uh, let's go play some board games and drink some wine. All you right? don't want to go watch a scary movie? Let's go watch a scary movie. What's Let a good scary movie on Netflix right now? Uh, I just watched Hush, which was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, that just came out. Uh, the story is a girl who is deaf is getting stalked by a guy who's like breaking into her house and like sneaking around in the background it gets real gory but it's pretty fun that one was really fun uh babadook's on there uh it's not on there anymore but uh for anyone who's never seen it i can never recommend troll 2 enough if you're scared of scary movies it's the most troll 2 is not on there anymore i don't think it is anymore uh, but it's so. the it's if you've never seen it do yourself a favor it's the biggest piece of shit you've ever seen yeah oh man for horror movies that one's the best i vote honestly for me Troll 2, better in The Room. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The Room is in unwatchable, but I still just, the best. I could, oh I, could yeah, quote, I, mean, I could quote that all day. But The Room is amazing. I'm talking about they're amazing in specific ways, and in those specific ways, I love Troll 2 way better. But I love a campy, shitty horror movie. You know what? Also, I just watched... Uh, I Black think campy, shitty horror movies helped me get into... Totally, Real like Tucker movies. and Dale. In case you've never seen it, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Or, well, that's a parody on Campy or, Shitty Horror movies. Or uh, Cabin, Cabin in the, the Woods. Woods. Yeah, those yeah. are the ones that everyone's oh like, God. you have to see that. You've those never are, seen those that? are great because they're, they're not just horror. They are definitely horror movies. But they're I mean, Shaun of the Dead. If you've never seen Shaun of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead. do yourself a favor. That movie is the best. These that are movie good, holds um, up so stepping well. Stepping stones into action. If you are horror. scared of horror, if you're scared of scary movies, if you're scared of zombie movies, uh, and you like even like seeing commercials for The Walking Dead is like Ugh, I don't like that. Shaun of the Dead, uh, Tucker and Dale, Tucker and Dale, uh, Cabin in the Woods. I want to throw Grabbers on the pile. Grabbers and the have host. I have not seen Grabbers yet, but the oh, host, so fucking good. Korean, oh, super I heard weird. The host is fucking great. I the really host is that. great. I just we just watched that uh, like a week or two ago, and it is so it the I think the coolest thing for it, and again for this story of we like what is going to like the it's the opposite of the jaws model of like we're not going to see the shark until oh the yeah third I, hear, act. I hear you see the you monster see the, the monster in minutes. like the first five ten minutes and that monster is terrifying yeah that's awesome i that really really fun too. i heard it's great I, w I was interested in seeing it and then i kind of like just put it off and then recently a whole bunch of people started talking about it i was like oh fuck i gotta watch this before it gets off netflix that's good um i don't know let's go watch a scary movie i love it cool. uh only if we can cuddle the entire time yeah fuck yeah give me a big kiss Mm-hmm.